Breath of the Wild has been a pivotal game in the Zelda franchise in more ways than one. Not only is it a global success, selling over 31 million copies worldwide, but it also had an interesting side effect within the gaming community. Being the first open world Zelda game generated a world of creativity and innovation, and pretty quickly that flowed over into modding the game. Now modding isn't new to the Zelda universe by any means, but Breath of the Wild definitely pushed the stream into a flowing river. The modding community really went nuts with the game, and the fans were eating it up. Mods were flowing out left, right, and center, and the longer it went on, the more extensive they got, and pretty soon, we were left with a candy store of mods to choose from. But today I'm going to focus solely on the difficult ones, the mods that tempted you to redecorate your bedroom wall with a new Pro Controller sized hole in it. This is my list of the hardest Breath of the Wild mods. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with my channel, I'm no stranger to challenge runs and making the game as hard as possible for myself. With over two years of putting in blood, sweat and tears, pushing myself to the limit, playing through the hardest mods I could get my hands on. So this list comes from personal pain and experience. Fifth on the list is Survival of the Wild, a mod that transforms Breath of the Wild into a survival game. There are two different modes for this mod, but today I'll be focusing on Hero Mode. The difficulty here comes from lots of different angles. Firstly, you can no longer fast travel, so you'll need to figure out transport. You also can't pass time at campfires, which might not sound like a big deal until you realize that this mod also makes nighttime pitch black. And getting from point A to point B without fast travel when you can't see a thing is quite the challenge. If that wasn't enough, you also have to manage your new hunger bar, which is only filled by eating cooked food. But Cooked food also doesn't give you hearts. Instead, you'll need to roast it in a fire before you see any healing. And on that note, you won't be receiving any resistances from eating either. So you'll need the correct armor for the correct weather. The weather is also amped up to extreme conditions and will drain your hunger bar extra quickly. And when your hunger bar reaches zero, you'll be stuck in a permanent exhausted state until you eat again. To top it all off, there is a unique overworld boss added to the game and it will jump scare you when you least expect it. Survival of the Wild does add this super cool upgrade to your bombs though, and it even does fire damage. So that's really cool. So if you enjoy the punishment of survival games, this mod is definitely for you. Next up, we have the Breath of the Wild randomizer. Rest assured, if a game can be modded, then it probably has a randomizer. If you aren't familiar with how a randomizer works, allow me to explain. It basically takes every in-game item that can be collected by the player and puts them all into a big mixing pot, and then stirs them all up and pours it out all over the game. There is something so exciting about opening a random chest and not knowing whether you'll get a green rupee or a champion's ability. Now that we have the basics covered, the Breath of the Wild randomizer takes it 10 steps further and tackles pretty much all aspects of the game. Nothing is safe in this mod, not the weather, nor the monsters, not even your health and stamina. But it gets worse because this mod even randomizes your inventory and location, meaning one second you're mid-fight with a Lionel and his Moblin sidekick, and the next you're being warped to Gerudo Town and now you're confused, afraid, and being bullied by the town guard. It can even warp you into random stages in the Trial of the Sword, because what better place to be put when you're completely unprepared? The Great Plateau might seem like a comfortable slow intro to the game, but I promise this mod throws comfortability out the window when you haven't even made it to your first shrine and it's already spawned three Moldugas on top of you. Throw in the fact that it can disable your ability to save the game and suddenly every step you take is a stress-filled nightmare, as if it wasn't already. The Breath of the Wild randomizer really tests your sanity and ability to adapt, and if that sounds like your happy place, then this is the mod for you. We have arrived at the podium and what I consider the top 3 hardest mods for Breath of the Wild, so if you do enjoy this video, remember to like the video and subscribe, and let me know what you think the hardest mods are in the comments. Taking third place on the podium is the Dungeon of Horrors. The Dungeon of Horrors was truly an experience, a painful experience. The mod consists of three separate dungeons you can find spread out across Hyrule and the portal into each is a talking sword. There is one in the dungeons below Hyrule Castle one on the small island next to the Korok Forest, and one on the stone pillar in the skull face in the northeast section of the map. Each sword has a unique trial for you to complete, and I cannot stress enough how overwhelming these trials feel the first time you attempt them, and then how overwhelming they feel the 10th time, and the 15th time. You might think the trials would get more difficult as you progress through them from 1 to 3, but that isn't the case. In fact, it's reversed, with 1 being the hardest and 3 being the easiest. I should also mention that all the monsters in these dungeons have been buffed through the roof, with increased speed, health, attack, and their stun box was removed. The first, and in my opinion the most difficult dungeon, has you fight a large horde of moblins and lizelfost in the dungeons below Hyrule Castle, so unlike the other two trials that give you ample room to work with, this time your movement is heavily restricted. On top of that, you have to deal with multiple different extreme weather. 
characters. In one room you're freezing, and in another you'll catch fire without the correct armor. So you'll have to rethink the strategy of wearing the best armor you can get your hands on. One of the rooms is borderline unbeatable without the correct strategy. This room took me literal hours to theory my way through and try and find a solution, because brute force simply wasn't an option. The room itself only has two Lizelfos archers and two moblins, but the archers are on pedestals out of reach and the moblins leave you no room to think. The door has sealed itself off behind you and without fire resistance armor, the weather will literally set you on fire. There is a unique trick to this room and finding the solution will absolutely rack your brain. And of course, if you do manage to clear all the rooms, you then have to defeat our good friend, Zelda. Just joking, it's a dual wielding Lionel. In the second trial, you were thrown into the final area of the Trial of the Sword. Although this time all the enemies have oversized ancient weapons, bows with thunder and ice arrows, and there's a guardian atop the tower, and you are its number one most wanted. With nowhere to hide, you have about two seconds to make a decision before arrows, guardian beams, and an array of spears and swords rain down on you. I hope you're good at wind bombs because you need to get the high ground and take out the guardian quick. And if you think once you've done that you can take out all the horses to remove the Bokoblin's movement advantage, don't bother because the horses are immortal. And if you defeat all of that, it spawns our friend the dual wielding Lionel again. In the third dungeon, you were set to face off against a dual wielding Lionel and six Bokoblins on horses in an open field, surrounded by cliffs. That might not sound difficult in itself, but I assure you it is. And without a strategy to defeat these, you are really going to struggle. The real struggle here, however, is getting the third sword to spawn, because 9 times out of 10, I was met with an empty location, or the game would simply crash. The Dungeon of Horrors doesn't cover the entire game, instead focusing all of its anger and malice into these three dungeons. And without the correct strategy, they are grueling to say the least securing their spot in third place on the podium. Second place was a seriously tough decision. Both of the final two mods are incredibly difficult and challenging in their own way, but after a lot of deliberation, I had to give second place to Dark Army Resurrection. This mod feels like hell opened up on Hyrule, and you were left to fight your way through it. It gives Breath of the Wild a complete rework from the ground up. This mod has over 100 different customizable options, but as with everything on this list, I'm going to be focusing on the hardest settings. At its absolute most chaotic, this mod is incredibly unbalanced balanced against the player. All of your combat is now locked behind a skill tree that can be progressed by collecting souls. For example, if you want to level up your two-handed weapon skill, then you would need to collect three two-handed weapon souls, and souls are dropped by slain enemies. However, it isn't a guaranteed drop, so in order to level up your combat, you will need to do a lot of fighting. But if you die before you are able to upgrade your skill, or there happens to be a blood moon, you lose all of your souls. All the enemies will respawn when you die as well, kind of like you would expect in Dark Souls. But fear not viewers, because it gets it's harder yet. Fast traveling requires a Sheikah battery, which can only be obtained by killing guardians. Opening chests requires keys, which can only be obtained by killing enemies and breaking boxes. And yes, you lose both of those too if you die or suffer a blood moon. Also, healing? Yeah, that's been disabled during battle, and you can no longer enter shrines while in active combat, so don't think you can run away that easily. Mainly because you won't be running because your stamina comes back extremely slowly. It's not all bad though, I mean you literally get the coolest ability ever added to any video game. The double jump. Your base jump height is drastically increased and with the addition of the double jump, your movement options around the map and in combat open, allowing you new escape routes and tactics while fighting. You can even enter bullet time off your regular jump. But be careful because this will drain your stamina at an extreme speed, and if you lose your stamina during battle, you're as good as dead. There are also custom unique weapons added to the mod that give you severe benefits during combat like a Lionel murdering axe, or a stealth sword that's super effective against stealth enemies. Speaking of stealth enemies, as well as there now being a stealth Lionel, now stealths are no longer affected by the sun, so you truly have nowhere to hide. Dark Army Resurrection on its max settings is so painfully unfair towards the player, and that's why it was such a close contender for first place. There are so many different settings that can be changed and tweaked to really customize your experience with it, but playing through this mod really tested my patience. Even Master Koga was a challenge. Even Master Koga. If you think yourself a talented Breath of the Wild player and really want to put that to the test, then by all means, please do try Dark Army Resurrection. But if you are prone to gamer rage, then take my advice and have Stardew Valley on standby, just so you don't have to frame your new wall decoration. And of course, coming in at first place is my favorite mod for Breath of the Wild, Relics of the Past. Relics of the Past is famous in the Breath of the Wild modding community for being the go-to hard mode mod. It throws you in the deep end before you've learned to swim, and then laughs at you while you inevitably sink. I think the first time I ever played Relics, I died roughly 360-ish times from leaving the Shrine of Resurrection to defeating Ganon. Relics gives you a complete overhaul of the Breath of the Wild experience, from start to finish. It has a few different modes, but I'll be focusing on Master Mode New Game Plus. 
Ralex comes equipped with a cruel sense of humor because before you even leave the Shrine of Resurrection, you are gifted with a sword and a big shiny button, and if you hit it, you're given the option of entering into combat practice, which you might think is a good idea before you start your playthrough. Does this look like combat practice? Does this look fair? But all jokes aside, Relics focuses on giving the Guardians in Breath of the Wild more presence in game, but also takes every other enemy in game and gives them an adrenaline shot. From the moment you leave the Shrine of Resurrection, you're greeted by Guardians, Golden Enemies, and an inescapable feeling of impeding dread. If you are able to make your way through Hyrule without rage quitting and decide getting the Master Sword would be a good idea, well, you might reconsider once you get to the Korok Forest. The Korok Forest got a complete rework and now simply wandering into the fog is no longer your only concern. You have to battle your way through a mix of buffed out Lizalfos, Styles, and Guardians and then defeat three mini bosses, a Lionel, a Skywatcher Guardian, and an explosive barrel shooting Octorok before you can gain entrance to get the Master Sword. The same goes for trying to defeat Ganon. Because now when you enter the Sanctum, you're met with waves upon waves of enemies that you need to defeat before you even get to fight Ganon. And in those waves are two unique enemies, a Malice Guardian that hurts you if you touch it and has a passion for firing lasers, and a new Lionel that will one-shot you and every shield you have. If you manage to brute force your way through the waves of enemies and defeat Ganon, you better make sure you have a hundred fairies with you because the Relics team decided Dark Beast was too easy and dumped all of the hardest enemies into the field with you. Now after all that, if you feel like crushing the last little bit of sanity you had left after completing the game, you can try your hand at Trial of the Sword. Trust me, and I really mean it when I say trust me, it will test your limits. Relix is insanely well balanced. It gives you all the tools necessary to be good at it, including unique movement to help in combat as well as really beefy weapons. So if you want an incredibly well balanced mod that will absolutely test your skills, I cannot recommend Relix of the Past enough. That was my list of the hardest Breath of the Wild mods. What did you think? Have you played any of these? Was there a mod that I missed? Let me know in the comments and thank you all so much for watching.